Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special edition show. I've got Troy Knapp. He is an ambassador for the Boisse collection here, and uh, he and I are doing a little Skype interview. I've got the real green screen up, so I should be much better quality than the last couple interviews. So the interviews were awesome, so you should see them. Don't worry about the video quality. It's the content, not the quality of the video. And uh, so Troy and I have been social media uh, connections for a while. And uh, he reached out when I was talking about, hey, let's, you know, do some talking about doing Skype interviews with people in the industry. And I think he's got a really uh, good story to kind of tell us. And so, Troy, why don't you go and take it and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me on. It's been uh, been a little while. We uh, sat on a tasting group, you know, for, for those that don't know this many years ago. Uh, so it's good to, to be to see you. In, in, yeah, I'm on the other country, side of the country now, though. I'm uh, out in D.C., um, on the water today. It's a little overcast. Otherwise, I might de be downriver. But uh, no, thank you for having me on. Uh, again, I'm Troy Knapp. I'm, uh, I've been in hospitality for about 30 years now, primarily in restaurants. And a few, few years ago, I wanted to kind of get a bit of a side business going. So I started to be an ambassador for a few different uh, winery groups. Uh, and most recently, Boisse. Uh, and for, for those that aren't familiar, Boisse is a collection essentially of wineries out of France, primarily Burgundy, a little bit of Rhone, uh, and then mostly also in Napa in Sonoma. And it's John Charles Boisset, uh, and he's married to Gina Gallo. So these are big, big names in the, the, the winery business. And what they have done, so back in 2012, they started this ambassador program, which allows you, you know, to come into the family with them and be able to be somebody who's in the market with their wonderful wines, bringing them essentially from the winery to the doorstep. Nice. So um, uh, they've got quite a few brands now. I, I I went through the website, and I'll have a link. I'll have a link below for the website so people can can check out what they've got here. Um, but they've got actually quite a, a, a decent amount of well-known brands. These aren't like little like off the wall like no name things, right? Right. Yeah, there's about 25 wineries in total. Uh, some of the recognizable names like Deloche, Raymond, uh, Buena Vista, which is one of the very first wineries in Sonoma. It dates back to 1857. Uh, and then there's a collaboration with John Legend called LVE, Legend Vineyard Exclusive. And then you have a few uh, great names out of France, uh, Domaine de la Bougerie, uh, Bouchard Any Fees. Louis Bouillot, and then the JCB name is kind of a collaboration of houses, uh, wines they're producing in, in Burgundy, in Napa, uh, with his initials, John Charles Boisset, on the label. Right. So, uh, yeah, when I went to Burgundy, I, I didn't get a chance to go to uh, your Bouchard. I went to the other one, which I think they actually were part of the same family at one point, and it's somewhere along the line they broke off. but Not broke off, but it's separate branches. But I did drive by it. A lot because for me to get to the rest of Burgundy, I pretty much drove by a not a that Bouchard and like a quite a few other larger or more well known places. So uh, when I get yes. back to Burgundy, I, I'll, I'll have to go and check Good out because they make awesome wines. And everybody you've mentioned, I haven't had the John Legend stuff, but I've had basically all the other ones, um, and they're all excellent quality wines. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the the Boisse uh, winery that who who started that because. Uh, so they they have they have their own winery and then it kind of then John Charles kind of grew that all right right so uh, Jean Claude his father back in sixty one along with his wife Claudine started that winery in in Burg Burgundy in, in uh, Neuilly Saint George all right very right nice. that's kind of where it all started yeah yeah very cool. he traveled to to California 
when he was young and fell in love with the area and just over the years of of getting some collaboration and whatnot and you know i think it all tied together especially when he he married uh, gina gallo so oh yeah i mean that that's that's winery royalty right there too <laughs> so um let's talk about um uh well, before we get into the ambassador thing, so when I went to the website, because I, I knew about the ambassador program, but I hadn't really delved into like the whole like collection. So it's not just wines they do. They do other stuff, at least, you know, that you can go through, right? Or is that, is that also part of the ambassador program? Sure. It's, you know, I, it's almost like a little bit of a mini LVMH, like a luxury good. So there's jewelry, yeah, yeah. there's handbags. Uh, my focus is a little bit more on the wine because that's a big passion for me. Uh, but there is other items in there. There's other spirits, there's glassware, uh, there's quite a bit that's in there. So a lot of luxury gifts and things of that nature. Right? Yeah, I was I was really impressed with a lot of that. Um, I just knew about the wine side. I had never really delved into everything else that he had. So um, kind of talk about how the ambassador program works and um, maybe uh, kind of maybe f- let's focus on if not that say I wanted to work for the ambassador program kind of work or maybe all together. Like, how does it work? Like if you're going to work, be an ambassador and how does it work for like, say if I'm not an ambassador, but I wanted you to come over and kind of do the whole, the whole presentation. Right. So essentially, uh, as an ambassador, an ambassador is able to, again, connect the winery with a uh, direct shipment or direct sales of product. So with that comes a, a big discount. So essentially, you know, I, I like it because I'm able to put wine at somebody's doorstep for about 20% off of the retail pricing minimum. A lot of times it drops down to 35, 40%. Uh, and it's a custom personalized experience and it can be done in different ways. So uh, they have some great recommendations of, they want everybody to be very much entrepreneurial in their spirit about how to manage and something that they feel comfortable with. So an example, as an ambassador, I don't have a certain amount that I need to sell. I will get commissioned on what I do sell. So it works great as a side job. There's been times in my life, I, in my life over the last year and a half, I didn't have a lot of time for it, so I set it aside. That's not a problem. And times like now where it's fitting into my life quite well because People are not going out. They're still consuming. They want a deal. They want a value. They want a personalized service, and I can do that all remotely. Okay. And it's it's really just about understanding. Same way, you know, some people might look at it as a sales job. I look at it as hospitality. No different. You know, if I'm going to call somebody and say, you know, what's what's happening? What are you drinking? What can I help you with? Here's what I have, and talk them through and put together a selection of beautiful wines. Uh, that is effortless for them and that I stand behind with my years of experience as a sommelier trying to deliver that same experience, no different than what it would be at the table, you know, essentially. So, so, and is, um, so these, these experiences, um, like you're doing these remotely, but are you, are some of these things in person experiences or is it? Yes, I have in the past. Absolutely. Uh, before mm-hmm. the pandemic and, you know, it was very much a more of a social. I'd have folks on my boat. We'd go out. We'd, we'd drink some good wine and uh, they love the wine. They buy the wine. I help them with that. And so that's how, you know, you can do it in different ways. You can. There's also where somebody wanted to host a party. You would ship the wine to their house and they would have their friends over and you could certainly that way. I haven't done it that way too much. I have my own style of doing it. And I think that's what's really great about the program is for those that come into it can do it as they see fit. Okay. Any way that you would, um, you know, getting a word out there. So I have a website, uh, which I've shared with you. Hopefully we can link up maybe and share with the, with the audience. Essentially anybody that's an ambassador has that same website that they can just share. So through their social media, if, it works out well for people who they don't necessarily have to have a great uh, capacity of wine knowledge more than they need to do to have a passion of just connecting with people and being excited about wine. And then they can go in and they can learn about the wines that they love and get knowledgeable about them and then share that experience because there is so much in there. And there's, there's wines that start at $11, and then there's collectible wines that go up to several hundred dollars a bottle. So it's really a nice, diverse portfolio that's in there. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah, and that that's good to have have a good diverse um, price points because you know not everybody can drop you know hundred dollars on a bottle of wine. Some people you know need to whether it's the pandemic or not, you know, and, and I can say that in what I've seen since I have been able to retain what my actual job is, I see people buying, you know, that $10 or sub $10 or $15 bottle of wine, but they're buying multiples of it. Or there are people buying that 50, 60, hundred dollar bottles of wine. Maybe not as many people doing that, but I haven't seen a dramatic drop in that type of purchasing either. Um, because I'm sure those, those people either have, just some good money stashed away or they still have their regular jobs too. And they're still making their normal money. So having that with you guys, having that wide range of not just brands, but just price points means you, you don't really have to worry about necessarily like this, the pandemic and maybe people's finances going, Hey, I got to be a little tight. Well, that's cool. We can, we can move you into something that's still great quality. You don't have to drop a ton of money. You can, we can still make something affordable for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of talked about, uh, I have my little notes here. I don't always have notes, but I, this time I do have notes. Um, so we've kind of talked about most of the stuff I was going to talk about here. Um, I don't, so this is something where, um, I haven't been out to Raymond, but, and I'm not sure how much, how, how have you been out to the Raymond Vineyard? Winery? I have. Yes, okay. I was part of the Raymond. They, they, they do a sommelier blending session every year. They bring in eight sommeliers and do an on-premise wines. I was part of that. Uh, that was back in 2013, I think it yeah. was. Did that, uh, which was fantastic. Or was it 2011? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think it was. And, yeah. So I know uh, former employer, we had we had one of the, the sommelier. Uh, I can't remember what they, I can't remember what it was called at the time, but. The Sommelier Selection, I guess it was called, um, wine. I remember us t- carrying that. Right. Yeah. So they'll, they'll bring a group together and they, we, you know, you do a blending session and that's what represents that vintage of Cabernet Sauvignon, um, uh, and, you know, a blend from the different AVAs and it's, it's a lot of fun. John Charles is a blast. And I think what a little bit more, just if I may, about, the, about the brand is it's something they're, they're very serious about, but just the, they, they present it in a very non-serious fashion, which I know you appreciate because you, you, you're the way you're so great about connecting wine with people and making it approachable and fun. Uh, this brand has that kind of fun aspect to it. Uh, John Charles is doing weekly uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. He's doing uh, virtual tastings, uh, which are six o'clock on Facebook Live on Pacific Time. Uh, and so it's a bit of a lifestyle brand, as you alluded to the other luxury goods, but it's something that you almost feel much part of in the sense that the customers who are either just connected to get the newsletter or they're part of the wine society or an ambassador or whatever, it's, it's a bit of a lifestyle brand where there's always some sort of activity and fun. Uh, we had Steven Spurrier on a couple of days ago, which was fantastic. Who, you know, with the blind tasting uh, of Paris in 1976, he, we had him on there. And so there's so much to to learn and have fun with. So uh, they're they're great at creating quite a bit of uh, excitement in the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so also over at Raymond, I hear like the tasting room is pretty pretty cool. It was like crazy. different, th- like themed out or something like that. Like there's like different <laughs> rooms and stuff. I, I mean, that's definitely a, I mean, not that, not because of that. I want to go visit Raymond anyway, but I think it's, I, I hear some, some cool stuff over there. It is. There's some mannequins that are hanging from the ceiling. Uh, it's a big party. It's a lot yeah. of fun. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's, 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 there's no way to not visit Raymond and not walk out having a blast. Just it's, it's, it's wild. It's Yeah. That's definitely going to be some, yeah. Next time I get out there, I'm going to definitely uh, make it a point to stop by there. So um, you've already kind of alluded to uh, to the pandemic um, and yeah. how you've operated. Have you seen differences in how people are buying or how much they're buying uh, as far as with the pandemic? Yeah, you know, I'm seeing that, I mean, what I'm able to do is, again, keep people home. They don't have to go shopping for their wine. And I think with wine, it's a little bit tricky because a lot of times we'll go out, we'll do a bottle at a time kind of a thing. And this is, you know, you're buying more usually when you're shipping. Uh, 
a lot of times there's deals or six packs or free shipping, which is nice. Um, and so when you're buying, you're buying a bigger quantity, which might seem like a lot, but if you do the math, there's a lot of it, there's quite a bit of savings in there. So, um, you know, people still want something quality. They want something to enjoy, um, but they don't want to have to go out to get it. So there's been a really big shift for it, you know, and it's been helpful for me because I am in hospitality. My, the hotel I work for is closed right now, as I'm sure many of us are in this industry. You know, our restaurants are closed. It's something we never could have imagined. You know, I've, Mark, I've told everybody my whole life, it's the one industry you can always count on. You can go anywhere. You always have a job. And who knew, right? Um, but you know what? I'm not one to sit around and wait. I want to, you know, I have three other irons in the fire. And, uh, you know, part of wanting to come on the show and really get this out there is there's opportunities and, and such as this. You know, for a company who's already up and running and to be a part of that and take, uh, you know, to be able to invest their, your time into it and get some commissions and, and get a paycheck. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's it's kind of a slam dunk, I think, for anybody who has passion in the wine industry and or some ways you're not on the floor right now. This is a great opportunity. It's, it's going to be about networking and connecting with people and your friends and providing a great service. So. Yeah. Yeah. And who knows? I mean, you're talking about making connections. I mean, this is like networking. When things get closer to normal or back to normal, you may find that you don't want to get back on the floor and this maybe is your full-time gig. Or you may connect with somebody that you can do some other business with uh, in addition to Boisse or in, in, in either in addition to or different. But, I mean, this is, um, this is an opportunity to maybe rethink what you're doing if you're in the hospitality industry and your current place is closed um, or even if they are open, it's just the, you know, people aren't coming out. So you're not maybe making as much money, especially if you're dependent on the sales, you're not like a salaried employee. Um, right. you know, this is, this is an opportunity. Um, I mean, I didn't necessarily go through the pandemic a couple of years ago, but you know, when I had my heart operation a couple of years ago, I had two months off and you know, I, I didn't necessarily leave restaurants at that point, but I had thought about it during that point. I mean, I had basically had a two month quarantine, so I've already kind of gone through this. Sure. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, I, I kind of thought about what I want to do and I thought there was a cool opportunity. And so I jumped at it. It wasn't a good opportunity for me, but that's fine. You know, I, I took a chance on it. And then once I got done with that, um, I, uh, I didn't really have anything. So, you know, if I had maybe been doing this, that might've been something that would have, uh, for the, like, but the six weeks or so I didn't have an actual real job that might've been great because it would have been, uh, something that could, I could work into whatever schedule I had. It wasn't like I had to go five days a week. I could still do the things I was doing, um, and still make some money. But, you know, those periods of time, since I wasn't really working kind of made me reflect on where I wanted to be and where I was currently. And when the retail side came up, I jumped at the chance because I knew the place I was going to work at was, or hopefully I was going to work at, which I do work at is, was a great company. So, um, this, this period of time, if you aren't working or even if you are, and you still are thinking maybe there's something different for you. I mean, this is an opportunity I think for maybe you to kind of use make make lemonade out of lemons and like you might have another career or something to something positive out of this you know right absolutely and i see there's kind of about there's about three different types of i would say ways that people go into it some have been in it for a few years um and have built a really great network of clientele stay really close to them and they're making six figures uh, supporting the family. There's other end of the spectrum. Some people will just become an ambassador because they love the value they can just get for themselves and they just buy wine because they're entertaining and they'll get, you know, 40 to 50% off a lot of time on their own wines that they're going to provide and entertain with. And then there's people in the middle like myself, which it's my second job and uh, there's time when I have more time and there's less time, but it's there and there's no pressure, but it's, it's like anything where you put a lot into it, you're going to get quite a bit out of it. And where I come in is 
is um, being able to mentor people through that program as an ambassador. So what you do is you bring people onto a team and it's like I would form my own team of ambassadors and we have group sales and targets and things like that that we all benefit from. So it's really structured quite well. So um, yeah, that's uh, you need, there's, there's support. There's a program that you go through at the beginning. It's online. They put you through. You learn about the history. You learn about different tactics and approaches to uh, kind of being that liaison for them. So all the tools and, and resources are there, really. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, also going through the website, and uh, I kind of mentioned this before we started, that uh, when I know wineries are doing uh, biodynamic and or organic farming, I do like to highlight that. So can you kind of talk to some of that about their philosophy? Yeah, I think, you know, that's an, kind of an underlying philosophy for them as a whole, you know, and I'll talk about a couple that have really resonated with me. One is at Domaine de la Vougerie in Burgundy. Uh, I had a chance to visit that winery back in 2011. And, um, you know, I was we were taking a tour out back and back where all the wood was stacked for the cooperage was back there. But around the corner was a, a garden and uh, the winemaker has these recipes of herbs and things like that he will create to spray on the vineyard his biodynamic treatments uh, to, to create harmony with the earth. They, they live by the, the almanac of uh, the bi biodynamic calendar as well. So it's, it's really a great example of what biodynamic really looks like, you know. And then you have Raymond here in Napa who does – they follow quite a bit of the same principles. And if you visit, you get to do a little bit of a walk throughout in the garden and they take you through a tour of what that really means and what that looks like to them and how they've structured all their systems to be uh, is eco-friendly and you know a, a steward of the environment kind of a mentality. So, and that's underlying through all uh, of the wineries that they bring into the portfolio, it's just their belief system. So, but. In Napa, Raymond's a great one to visit because you're going to be able to see all that. And if in France, uh, again, Domaine de la Bougerie. So, yeah, great examples. Yeah, I, um, I've, I've visited quite a few wineries throughout the world, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean I've mean, i been to quite a few countries. Well, I've only been to like really two countries other than the United States, for, but, but it feels like I've traveled all over the world. But, um, you know, really... I went to a winery in Sonoma and I got to see the whole ecosystem of biodynamics. And that's where it really kind of, I mean, I understand it intellectually what biodynamics is, but it really kind of made sense more and more sense because I got to see how they integrated everything um, and how they operated. And uh, you know, it, I, I think, you know, if you're able to do it um, you should totally try to at least do organic or at least sustainable type of farming and sustainable in the sense of how you operate. Um, you know, I know that's parts of the world that it's really difficult to organically farm or biodynamic, biodynamically farm, at least as far as being certified and do it every single year that you might have to do something that, you know, use other types of treatments. But I think I'm all for it. If you're, if you're able to do it, then I say do it because I, you know, why not? <laughs> you know, um, and then, um, yeah, I think I everything that I really wanted to highlight, I think we've we've talked about. Um, is there anything else that maybe we haven't chatted about, or maybe I didn't, or maybe I talked about doing I hadn't asked you about? You want to want to chat about? Uh, I think you did a pretty good job of covering the ambassador program. Some of the highlights of joining as somebody who wants to receive wine, uh, to touch on that a little bit, there's mm -hmm. a wine society program, just uh, essentially like a wine club, their version of it. And there's no cost for anybody to join. And what it does is it allows any of these members to get 20% off all the time, 20% off below retail. And the only commitment is that they receive three bottles every quarter. So it's essentially a case spread out over a year. And with that signing up, that's the, the benefit you get. You get um, special offerings. You get complimentary tastings when you go to the wineries. 
again, you just become kind of part of that family. And like I said, it's that kind of that lifestyle they provide. So um, lots of great perks, but most importantly, you get great wine. Uh, and they'll pre-select for you saying, here's the three bottles we're going to send. But you can go in before it's sent and change that cart and say, you know what? I like this or I want to add this on. And the ambassadors also will reach out to their clients and saying, your next shipment's coming. You loved the the uh, Louis Bio Cremant. Uh, can I? Would you like me to put a couple of bottles of that in there? It's on sale for sixteen dollars and eighty cents right now. It's thirty five percent off. So, you know, um, and that's a great example. Just really beautiful classic style bubbles for again as low as sixteen eighty. So, yeah, and I mean, just speaking just in general about Cremant, I mean, it's it's. If you don't know, which I mean, industry people should know what, where Cremant is, but Cremant is like is getting champagne method for not having to spend fifty bucks. I mean, I love Cremant. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, this is I that... mean, it, it you're, you're getting us, you're getting that style. I mean, I know it's hard to replace champagne. I get it, <laughs> but if you don't want to drop fifty bucks, Cremant is the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking on this particular one. Um, so we, have, we have 16 months of age on it, so the bubbles are really fine. It has, you know, it's Pinot and with 10% of Gamay in it. Uh, really classic, a uh, little red currant, a little raspberry, a little bit of orange peel. Really delicious, classic. I love it. This is my house sparkling wine here because it's just delicious. Nice. And I, I'm a bubble. I'm like nuts about good good bubbles. So yeah. Absolutely, man. It's a lot of bizarre. Um, so. so the you were talking about that when you sign up, you get you basically get a case spread out for your. I I so I mean, I I buy a ton of wine. I, I probably shouldn't. I I actually slowed down my wine buying, but that's for other reasons. I already I because I have I I have too much wine already. Um, but I like that idea that when you're committing to a a wine club, if you want to call it that. Um, you're not committing to like a case every quarter, you know, um, you're able to customize it. Now, if you wanted to like get a case, it, is there more levels? Like, is this just a three, three per quarter? Is that kind of like the, the entry level and you can go higher? Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, and a lot of people will start with that entry level and then have the flexibility of it before it ships. We customize it. You know, again, I'll call them your, your order's coming and they say, yeah, you know what, let's make it a full case. I'm low, my stock is low, or, or I'm fine with the three bottles this time, next time, you know, and that's my role as, as a sommelier is, you know, whether it's in a restaurant or to understand their needs and take the pride in delivering on that. That's, I think, something that's very important is we want to deliver the best quality drink we can for the value, right? And so, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we've, we've kind of really, you, you've really kind of touched upon about the sommelier side of things. And just the fact that um, the, the collection that you have access to is literally like going into a restaurant with a really good wine list. You know, it's not just, you know, 15 wines on the list. I mean, you've got a wide selection. You've got, you know, quite a few uh, properties and they all make quite a few wines. So it's not like you have a limited selection and you can fulfill that role as a psalm and really kind of guide somebody and you, you've got something for everybody, right? Absolutely. Yeah, there's even on the website you'll see that uh, a lot of the wines are put together on a list to look like a restaurant list almost too. So there's different ways to view it and look at it. But yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, well, Troy. Um, if there's anything else you want to chat about, I mean, I, I'm on your time, so. <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate it. It's just it's good to share this information. I know that I mean we're all going through some interesting times, some challenges. All of us are affected differently. Mm -hmm. Um, and for those that are looking for an opportunity, uh, I'm, I'd love to be able to help and just to reach out to me and I would be a mentor through the process and, uh, be able to be excited about something that, uh, the aspect of doing a little bit of your own personal business is, is fun on the side and who knows where it goes. Um, but something to work on in the meantime. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, Mark. It's good to see you. Same here, man. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, hopefully soon we'll, we'll be able to do this again in person. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, dude. 
Um, okay. So, uh, so folks, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I'll have I'll have links below uh, for you to find out more. I'll, I'll use Troy's link that he gave me. Um, so you get do you, is it so so yeah. Let's say let's say um, uh, I use your link and I sign in. Are you getting any credit for that? Um, I didn't really pay attention. To, I didn't look. I didn't like inspect the link, but I assume it's like an affiliate link or something like that. Right. So that would be anything that goes through that website is connected to me. So my contact information is on there. If somebody signed up, it would their information would come to me. I'd be able to reach out to them. Uh, if they sent me a link uh, or sent me an email through that, uh, my my all my contact information is on there. So whether they're signing up or want to buy a wine, it's they just go through there. There's a menu bar. They click on it. They can look at sale just to see what's on sale right now. They can look at the ambassador program, join, and then ambassador, and just to see what it's all about. There's some videos on there that walk through in a little bit more detail. There's quite a bit of incentives that they put into the ambassador program, trips to France, and then also quite a bit of energy at the beginning just to help everybody to get them going. Mm-hmm. Nice. To start out. So a lot of support. Cool. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, I'll definitely, uh, you know, that link will be below. So please check that out. Um, whether you're interested in becoming an ambassador or you just want to buy some cool wine. Um, like I said, I've had, I've not had all the wines, but I've had enough of the wines from the collection to know that they're making good quality product. Um, and that's always how I suggest wines. If I've not had the wine itself, but I know that either the reputation of the winery or I've had wines from the winery, then I definitely can, I can definitely, um, recommend those wines with confidence it's just like any other brand if you know the brand makes a quality um you, it should be why across the entire brand so you, you have that you have that trust and that confidence that you can buy something from that brand whether it's a wine or anything else so um you know that's one of the things why i you know really wanted to do this because i knew that uh, uh the Boisset collection has a, a wide range of stuff and it's all good all good quality all right, folks. So, like I said, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, there'll be—I don't know which on Skype. I don't know which way to point, but I think it's on this way. If you go to the website, there'll be links above to friend me up. If you're watching on YouTube, I don't know. There's—you'll find me somewhere. But there'll be links below. Uh, links below for this, of course. My normal links down there. And uh, yeah, we'll see everyone again next time. All right, cheers. All the best and wellness. Same to you. Yeah.